Hi, welcome to Sekiro. We're doing the Ashina Outskirts Gate Path. Uh, click the I in the top right for access to info and show more uh, in the description for time codes to jump to specific bits. If you've done the general and want to explore the level, that starts at six minutes. But for now, uh, let's deal with the general. If you are about to level, uh, go farm a little bit um, because you might die here. You'll probably die here, if I'm honest. Um, and also, the uh, if once you get your skill point, the sculptor will give you a thing which lets you upgrade skills. Save it for Makiri Counter for now. The Whirlwind Slash is not going to be that useful here. Um, but there's a pellet on the left, don't worry about that, we'll get it after the six minute mark. For now, let's deal with the general. You want to come over this roof, jump, jump down, uh, you can either get a flying attack like that, a uh, leaping death blow, or you can drop down behind him um, and just get a regular start on it. But he's a two circle dude. What this means is he's a mini boss. Um, since he's not an actual boss, there's almost always a way to stealth kill one circle off these guys. So uh, yeah, that's the way to deal with him over the top. That basically cuts the fight in half. Now, you'll find he's got a lot of quite terrifying attacks. He's taken a lot of things that you've seen before and making them much, much harder. He also punishes it when you attack. He's got what you call in Dark Souls high poise. What this means is you can be attacking him and it won't interrupt his attack. Um, he'll also do these sweeps, but we'll go into his moveset in more detail in a minute. But what you really want to watch for is over attacking. What this game is trying to teach you is that deflecting is often better than attacking. Filling that posture bar is more important than filling the health. Um, I'll talk, or emptying the health. But uh, let's talk about his moves. He's got this sweep where he comes out. What you want to do is jump it and then land on his head by tapping jump again. Uh, and it will do some posture damage. There you go. He often does two in a row. It can come after chops. It can come at the beginning of a fight. It can come out of nowhere. It can come after a leap. Um, and you can also, as you saw at the beginning, punch interrupt it. Now, not to confuse it with this grab. He does it very infrequently. I think I got it once in about 15 goes at him. But there it is there. See, he'll raise his hand up compared to the sweep where he goes down low and puts out his sword to the left or right. There's the grab again. And here's the sweep coming from the other side. So just be wary of the difference. With a grab, you want to dodge away. That's the only thing you can do. Um, and it's probably going to kill you if it hits you. So it's, yeah, terrifying. He also has these chops into sweeps. Um, there, he'll do a sweep, jump off his head. Uh, chop, chop, chop. What you want to do generally is block these. Watch for the sweep, follow up. He also has a series of chops. There's one that just missed. Uh, you can use that moment to heal if you need to. Better off using a fistful of ash uh, to make room for healing, though. Uh, we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, yeah, th that This last chop here really caught me out. I didn't realize he was going for it. So you kind of always want to be blocking and ready for the moves. And just be prepared to practice while he loses moves, learn his moveset and get the timing. Uh, here we've got some leaps coming. Mm. These are deflectable, they're blockable. Um, you can attack through them, which is misleading, but you won't knock him down and then he'll chop you in the face because you won't have time to block. So uh, you can also dodge around him and get him from behind, but we want to be doing posture damage to him. Um, I'll talk about that more later. There's me getting chopped because I'm overextending. Uh, watch for the little hand back slap uh, here. Uh, it'll follow up with a sweep. He broke my posture there and knocked me down. That wasn't the cleverest. And then he'll uh, sometimes do this where he regains posture. If you let him complete, if you don't hit him soon enough, uh, so always chase it. Here's Fistful of Ash. Don't overextend. Uh, it only gives you one free hit. It doesn't knock him out for a significant period of time. Um, yeah, see, he's kind of a nightmare. And you can just jump over this guy um, if you want to. You don't have to fight him now. But uh, here is a series of, well, it's just getting him to death blow and letting him back off. First of all, if you see the red dot, always go for it. If you miss it, he'll regain a ton of posture. Um, but here's why not chasing vitality is a thing. This guy is kind of an extreme exception in that his vitality far outmatches his posture, which is to say you can get his posture down really, really soon. And because he's always on the offensive, his posture never really recovers. But generally speaking with bosses, you want to get them down to somewhere around half health so their posture doesn't recover too quickly. Uh, and then focus on doing posture damage by deflecting and doing kiri thrusts and jumping on their heads when they do sweeps and punishing. Dodging is essential for a couple of bosses but for the most part i tend to avoid it i mean it's a perfectly viable method it's just going to be a lot harder to build up their um vitality the, to knock out their posture uh if you're always dodging around because you're not really doing posture damage and later on you'll learn a bunch of moves which are focused on doing posture damage um but are risky to play anyway here's the fight from the first stab um i go on the offensive a little bit uh, just to drag some attacks out of him and then it's just deflecting and waiting for sweeps and because I'm not attacking I've got time to read the sweeps coming I'm just standing there now if your posture gets high because you miss some deflects uh, hold the guard button um, and your posture will go down a lot more quickly here it's dangerously high I should be blocking this but thankfully he comes in with an attack um, and it just goes down naturally over the course of time 
just like with bosses, the higher your health, uh, the quicker your posture will recover. So once you're on low health, you really need to be actively managing your posture recovery, otherwise you're going to get overwhelmed. He's going for the recovery, so chop him and then jump the sweep, and that's the finish. Um, so yeah, deflect. Focus on blocking. Don't go on the offensive unless you're sure you've got an opening, otherwise he's going to punish you. Collect a prayer bead and a gourd seed for the completion, and congratulations. Well done. You've done it. Now, uh, you can plug on here if you haven't used any healing and you're feeling confident. Don't miss the Fistful of Ash here. Generally, there's an item near a boss which indicates its weakness, um, which is pretty neat if you explore, although obviously you don't get a chance to explore <laughs> the first time through. But head back to the Sculptor. Um, if you haven't leveled up, if that pushed you over and you took a risk, uh, he will give you the Shinobi Esoteric Text, which allows you to learn skills. Again, avoid Whirlwind Slash for the time being. I haven't found it that useful. Um, instead, save towards Makiri Counter. Uh, it's two skill points, and you can go, we're going to get another skill point easy here without any trouble. Um, and it's, uh, well, we're going to get to a better farming spot in a minute, so don't focus too much on farming yet. Um, in fact, the very next checkpoint we'll get to has a fantastic farming spot that's way over-leveled. Uh, but anyway, carry on through here. So head up to grab the, pallet, uh, the pellet uh, that was up above the general, and then you're going to drop down here. This is the only way I've found down here, and you're going to take some fall damage. So use a pellet, uh, and then head over here. This way, you're going to find a branch to hook onto. There it is. Grab that. Uh, and there's a Gaijin Sugar down there. Now, this is a terrible splice, for which I apologize. Um, but I, you can jump onto that tree and hook it, but I failed miserably. I was trying to Indiana Jones it. Um, instead, head down here. And this was the original take. You'll notice I ran straight past the Gaijin sugar, sugar, so I had to splice that last bit in. Anyway, come up those steps and then hook your way over here. Uh, I dropped down, I missed it, but there are some pellets to refresh your load, so to speak, and then come up this way. There's a guy here who's a pain if you come at him forward, uh, front on. Um, he's got a massive hand cannon, as you can see, or shoulder cannon, really, and he's just going to rain fire down upon you. Then from him, you can drop down to gank this guy. There'll be a guy talking to two other fellows there. He's going to see you. Wait till his marker turns yellow and then bug out. Use the rope. He'll come over and investigate. Don't let it go red, otherwise his friends are going to see you too. When he moves all the way out there, you can do a drop kill on him. Now, normally those other two don't see this, but in this case, the, that guy went immediately red. Now here, I think, oh god, I've got a fight of two on my hands. For some reason, he only goes yellow, but what you want to do is basically go back up there, hide, wait for them to reset, drop kill the first, and then fight the second like this. I don't know why I hooked up there, there was no need. Uh, these guys are easiest to deflect, but annoyingly, they don't always attack. You'll see later there's one that I Benny Hill a bit. I keep hitting him and he just stands there. Um, so I can't get his posture down or do any damage. Anyway, coming up the hill, you'll meet this chap. He tells you about his mum just up here. Go talk to her. She'll say, are you my son? Doesn't matter who you are. She'll give you this bell charm, which we're going to use to get to Hirata Estate in a little bit. Around here, there's a couple of chickens. And underneath this woman in her house are three uh, light coin purses. Always block chickens. They can do an, un an ungodly amount of damage at this level. They'll take you like half your health bar. Um, it sucks. Anyway, smash those bricks, crawl through here, grab the three coin purses. Uh, you can also come in through here, uh, which is just underneath her, if you smash up those things that are blocking the entrance. But both entrances to that room are blocked. Uh, don't go out of the secret entrance, otherwise the chickens are going to peck you to death. You can go and get some different flavor text off this guy when you're done. Uh, but now we're going to head up towards where we came in. Uh, this little house just ahead of us has got a rifleman in it. There's another rifleman just up and to the right. Someone nearly saw me, so I'm bugging out, coming back this way. We'll go investigate a shop that you can see uh, from the way you come in. Uh, it's this little tent up here, and this is the only way up. That hook's kind of janky, so you might have to move around it to get that very last one. Uh, move around on that platform where the first one, or the second one, took me. Um, you'll see later when we come back up, I have to move around to get it to light up again. Uh, we've got a rifleman down to the left. Uh, sorry, a rifleman over there. Um, there's two guys up on the top by that broken tree. There's a patrol of three people wandering around that you may have just seen on the right. Uh, they're going around the back of the house now, there. Um, and then a rifleman just down to the right. Uh, there's no one down there. There's normally one guy patrolling on his own, but for some reason he didn't come patrolling this time. He got stuck and just stopped. But this rifleman is your biggest problem. He's very sneakily positioned, and we'll see a lot of what you do unless you get him early. So deal with him, and then we're going to grab another coin purse. Oh, note at the shop as well, they had some Shinobi firecrackers uh, for 500. That's your next prosthetic tool. You've already found one coin purse previously. There's three underneath the old lady and one up on this roof, so that's 500 coins. That'll get you the firecracker if you don't have the money any other way, uh, which at this point you probably don't. Anyway, there's an eavesdrop opportunity. Normally I just rush over and gank those two, but um, I realized I didn't do the eavesdrop at the beginning. So you want to check that that patrol isn't coming up uh, on you here. 
um, drop in and kill this rifleman. So normally if I'd already eavesdrop, what I would do is kill this guy and then wait until that rifleman there, you can just see him turning yellow now, goes yellow all the way, he'll walk away to investigate. As it is, we left him, don't miss that ceramic shard, you can use those, we'll be using them in the next level uh, to distract people. Um, you can also buy some, so don't worry if you don't have too many, and there's loads lying around. I think I've finished the game with a couple of hundred. Um, over here, up back this way, this is where we fought the general, just the other side of this wall. And then up onto this watchtower over here, you want to hook up this way. You'll see these guys down here, two of them talking. Now, if you come straight here, one of them will be walking up, so you have to wait about 30 seconds for the guy on the right, I think, to arrive. Uh, and it's only when he arrives that you get this eavesdrop opportunity. They tell you about Gyubu, uh, the fearsome or the terrifying or something, who's a boss who's coming up ahead. But we're not going to deal with him for quite some time. We're going to go on a big diversion first. Um, anyway, uh, down here, before you kill those two, or that one, here's a fat lady, or a fat man, I never really know, a terrifying person. See that guy standing there? He's normally on patrol. What I should have done is let him come to me, but I was worried about the guys above hearing me. And again, there's only two of them. You can shoot up here, probably uh, drop kill one. I was really stupid here. I was looking for the patrol just to make sure they weren't too close. And then I went back here. I didn't realize I was out of stealth and I didn't notice the archer starting to notice me. The yellow bar's just built and now it goes red. I notice when that other guy goes white and I'm like, oh god, I'm out of stealth. But by then it's too late. So this archer's now coming over. Here, you can see him coming down there. I don't really know what happens to him. I lose track of him uh, for a bit. Um... And so then I, this is, I'm quite a lot of waiting here, he's just gone yellow and then I go here and it goes red again and he sees me, he's off to the left, but I didn't notice those arrows when I was playing. Anyway, he's not a problem, so what I'm going to do is, uh, however you've distracted him, jump over here, or just run around in this case, and then gank this guy. There we go. Now the guy down there, I think, sees me at this point? No, no, I'm lying. Sorry, yeah, I got a drop kill on this guy. And then the other guy sees me, yeah, over there. That's the archer coming back, wherever he's been. So now he's coming to investigate the body. Don't miss under the uh, initial rifleman. Sorry, they're riflemen, not archers. Um, uh, Mibu, Balloon of Wealth. That's going to give you extra money when you're grinding. Now I'm looking for the patrol to see what they're up to. There they are, there. Uh, not doing very much. So I wait for them to split up. The rifleman is heading back up towards his dead friend, and those three are on the move. So... Uh, first of all, the investigating the body has actually caused them to split up. Normally what I would do is backstab one of them when they're on patrol, and then bunch away, like fire away onto any nearby hook, go and duck in the bushes until there's two of them, then backstab two and uh, sword fight one. Um, it's up to you which one you want to backstab. This is the guy who, see, I keep attacking him and he doesn't attack back, uh, so it's impossible to take his posture down. In the end, I just keep going on him. Whale, 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 and eventually his posture goes down, but it's kind of... Ugh. Those guys are a bit of a pain. Uh, but deflect, and they take like two deflects and they die. It's pretty easy. And now we're heading back to, this is towards the lady's house uh, that we got the bell key from. And then it's up this way. Now we've got our five coin purses. You can see here I have to move around a bit to get the um, angle on that hook because I missed it when I was in the air. And then from here, the bottom item that this guy sells, well, first of all, what you want to do is sell your uh, five light coin purses or as many as you need to make 500. Um, and then buy the firecrackers. We're going to need another 150 really soon because uh, there's another merchant right nearby who needs 150 sen to unlock, essentially. Um, but his story will make sense in a little bit. Make your way up here. Uh, this is where we killed the, um, the dude with the bazooka. And then over here. Now, uh, over here's a chicken. Watch for the chicken. Again, they can come out of nowhere and damage your health. There's a memory here that you can interact with to get a bit of backstory. And then if you look behind them, I missed this guy for so long. I can't believe I didn't see him initially. Uh, is a merchant. And he's going to tell you about that night that you were together that you don't remember. But don't worry, it'll make sense soon. Uh, give him 50 sen uh, to get a bit of background information on that. And then you can give him another 100 sen and he will give you some information about the next prosthetic tool, a flame barrel, uh, which casts fire. Uh, and uh, we're going to need that for the ogre up ahead. Um, if you've already got the flame barrel when you speak to him, he'll give you two oil. Uh, but yeah, he looks forward to seeing me next. You can just travel somewhere and come back if you want to buy stuff from him, but he doesn't have anything remarkable that you really need at this point. Um, and we're going to be farming a lot of money where our next destination. But yeah, uh, so a couple of things left to do. One, go kill the chicken just so everyone in this zone is dead and we can say yay completion. And two, on the way to the chicken, uh, pretty much where we picked up the first pellet when we fell down behind the bazooka man, you'll see over here. 
There's the bazooka guy. I've got to climb this wall. I this yeah, I'm not sure about this wall climbing. It always catches me out here. I don't know why. But there was the bazooka man there. You want to drop down onto this tree. Uh, I'm so used to going for the hook twice. I was doing it instinctively, muscle memory. I managed to hook my way off the side there. But it's a good demonstration that if you fall, it will take half your health. If you've got more than half health, it will put you back on the last platform you were on. If you've got less than, I did it again. Brilliant. If you've got less than half health, it's going to kill you outright. It's the safe thing to do. Drop down onto that tree, then hook over onto this one, and then jump down onto there. Do not use the third hook that's an arrow. That will take you from... It will swing you, essentially. Uh, and you want to use it from this angle. Anyway, there's two balloons over there and uh, charm. Swing over to there to grab uh, some scrap iron, which is prosthetic upgrade material, which you won't be able to unlock for quite some time. Don't worry. Uh, and then you want to jump over there. Hit mash the grab button just in case you fall short. The quickest way back is up on this tree. Uh, and that's going to take you back to where you dropped off and then you can just run back to where you were or use hooks. Uh, but you can also go back if you were down and you jumped onto this platform. Uh, you can go back and it'll bring you right up. It's really slow, never take this route, but it'll bring you right up back by the idol. You shimmy along this wall and then you run up here and then you hook and then you hook and then you hook and there you go, there's the idol. Um, but yeah, that is the end of the gate path. That's the zone down there. Uh, don't forget to go to the Sculptor and upgrade your Shinobi Firecrackers. We're going to be heading over to there. There's two guys there, one up on the left and a chained ogre, but that needs fire. We don't have fire yet. It doesn't need fire. It's just going to make it a million times easier. Um, and there's a bunch of like the people you eavesdrop on ahead talk about fire for the red-eyed dudes, and there's loads of clues that fire is the way forward. Um, and it's just good. We're going to get a couple of things in the next zone. But yeah, go get your Shinobi Firecrackers. Hurrah! And then we're going to go pray at the Buddha statue with these prayer beads. It's not out there. Muscle memory again. It's there. Uh, but that is on the right hand side. On the left, the previous zone. Uh, I think it's a Sheena Outskirts, a Sheena Outskirts, or Dragon Spring Idol, or something like that. Anyway, uh, the eye on the top right will give you access to all that and more. I hope it was useful. See you in the next video. Bye!